it really has hit me over the course of the last week or so playing this map that my favorite aspect of it is the fact that you don't have to hunt around water to have success. Well, that and the weird gates, they can be rather entertaining to uh, push around if you not check those out. This outpost right here, I don't imagine they're going to stay like that forever, uh, but they can cause some pretty interesting little physics things, so uh, I would recommend giving them a look as well. But the plan for today, minus pushing gates around and enjoying all that, is going to be pretty much to stick to the fields. We've had a good amount of success with alligators and our hunts for them, but I still want to continue kind of getting after the quail. Obviously, these tend to be pretty good areas for raccoons, wild hogs, and some of the other species that we don't yet have diamonds of, including what I think this is a track of, the gray fox. So we'll kind of see what kind of success we can have out here in the fields today, and hopefully we can add to our new diamond total. And it kind of figures the first animal we run into was actually our first diamond on this new map, and unfortunately, he managed to avoid our first shot, second one, not so much. It looks like it's going to bring him down pretty quickly with the 12 gauge bird shot, but I've got to say, I've got a renewed kind of drive to chase the raccoons here on Mississippi after seeing the different piebald variations. So there is gray, brown, and blonde, I think, as the three kind of common variations for the raccoons. They all have their own piebald. There's a piebald blonde, piebald gray, and piebald brown, I think. And they all look really, really cool. So I'd like to actually, if not just kind of go after them and hope to find them outright, just kind of continue to hunt the males when we see them and get those respawns. They are some of the coolest looking rares in the game. And obviously, the multi mount with the gator is quite nice. I'm not going to say necessarily that I would take down the diamond that we have, but maybe a second multi mount. We'll be on the cards if we can find something like that. Now, I definitely don't intend to target these guys the entire time, but as we're kind of moving through an area we haven't spent much time in, I think it's definitely good to, number one, go ahead and try to get those respawns, as I mentioned, but also kind of check to see what's out here, because I'm not sure what we've missed. I haven't spent a lot of time kind of in these in-between areas between the fields, just sort of the lightly sort of forested areas, and there could be anything kind of hiding in these things that I want to check out all the tracks and especially get eyes on any animals that we can so another kind of smallish raccoon and eventually it will go down from that 22 hornet shot it takes a while but they don't run all that fast so i think you'll be not too far away and fortunately that was the case it's been a non-stop kind of warning call event here for the male raccoons so far pelvis and flesh i'm pretty sure just a single flesh it will take them down but definitely good to get the second shot in there when we can, and I think we're going to kind of continue our way over towards the fields. I'm pretty sure I would have gotten that guy's track. I had a bunch of raccoon tracks on the way over, and even if not, I'm sure we'll make more rounds through here in the future, so we'll kind of stick to our field plan for today. That is definitely the one kind of negative aspect to hunting the fields on this map. Things like turkey that can fly away, and really any of the species, they really do just hide whether it's beneath these stocks of corn or in some of the uh, other crops they can be pretty tough to see and fortunately turkeys do you know pretty quickly make themselves visible when they fly off but those aren't the easiest shots so it is kind of a different hunting style but I like that and I think that's you know both of those kind of go into the same category hunting the fields and this different style of potentially having to push animals out of their zone and spook them on purpose in order to see them. Both of those are so different from the norm. It is just kind of refreshing to do something different and I think that's why I've really quite enjoyed the small game on this map, probably even more so than I did on Rancho and that was one of my favorite aspects on that map as well. Man, I hope by the way, I know that's just a female black bear track, but if we could ever find a diamond black bear on this map, for one, if it could be the dusky fur type, if I can really just, you know, put all my wishes out there, that would be fantastic. I've wanted a color phase diamond black bear for a while. Seeing the dusky fur type, that's that's the only thing I want now in terms of black bear. But the other thing is, chasing a legendary black bear through a cornfield would just be, I don't know why, but I, if, I feel like it would be such a fun time. So maybe one day we can be fortunate enough to have that happen, but... In the meantime, we're just kind of chasing turkeys and rabbits through those fields. That one's got a little more potential. 
Although, the potential of hitting it, maybe not so much? I don't know. The shot felt decent. It sounded like something was moving around that was not rascal. Now that we got hunting pressure, we made that shot somehow through that tiny little gap. I just wonder if that was like a red fox or something. But anyway, I've been talking about really wanting a diamond eastern wild turkey, if for no other reason, just to kind of have the turkey species that I would see here in PA. We've had turkeys in the game for, I think about a year and a half now, would have been with Silver Ridge Peaks in the summer of 2020. But I guess it's just a different thing. It's, it's the fans and the wings, really. When you see the different variations in Call of the Wild, you can tell the difference based on that. And just to see what I'm used to seeing in hunting is really, really cool. So hopefully one of these is going to make diamond yet again. We have that 4.5. First time we've crossed the 10kg mark, which I guess is good, getting somewhere. It's not all that often that I get my hopes up for a rabbit. Unfortunately, with a level 2, I'm not sure it's going to be what we're hoping for, but level 2 diamond cottontails are a thing. And this is a light gray fur type, and I mentioned in the last video really liking the gray and light gray fur types, and I didn't realize that it was sitting right there when we went into the map to take a look at that, but we can cross our fingers for this. It is a 1.8 yet again, and we're just barely missing it. 1.9 is diamond, and they are scored by their weight. Now, all animals that are scored by their weight in Call of the Wild have some variability, so just because it's 1.86 kg, doesn't necessarily mean it has to be 1.8. It could be 1.7, 1.9, and of course, if it was rounded up just a little bit, we'd have that diamond on a light gray, but hopefully that'll come eventually down the road. And there are a number of rares for them as well, so that's another thing to be on the lookout for. Well, for once we kind of see, the quail don't always cooperate like I think they are meant to, but they've definitely been a lot more consistent than the pheasants have in terms of like when they flush and the distance at which they flush. Now I think that one quail that we just shot, as much as it was a little underwhelming, that might have been important. I've kind of noticed with species that travel in herds or flocks, often it seems like you have to take out the entire herd or flock to get the respawn, so I'm hoping that means we'll have a new flock of quail in this area, and this has been the one that I kind of continue to come back to when I'm looking to go after them, so hopefully that'll be good. We had a couple of big ones in there, but none that quite reached diamond. And maybe in the next flock there will be, but we're kind of having to hunt the fringe areas to look for them, as it's past their feed time and they are kind of resting in the trees, which makes it tough to get shots at them, so I'm kind of thinking we may reset back to kind of like early morning-ish, and just give that a shot in some of the northern fields. Well, it worked in terms of finding some of the quail, and I will say that can be a decent method of at least trying to determine what the best quail in a particular flock is. That was a shot that I wasn't expecting to hit. Sometimes, especially in multiplayer, that is kind of just the way that I've approached it. Just try to spot them all and at least determine if there are any in there that have a chance. And if there's not, you know, just kind of go for whatever ones are around. Now, it seems to me based on the amount of tracks, and maybe there are some other species in here as well. But it looked like there would have been more quail than we saw. Now, that often happens, where they just decide to flush, whether it's late or... I don't exactly know what causes that, where more wolves suddenly show up. And again, we're kind of left to at least attempt to see if there's anything good in there, from what I'm seeing. Nothing really that we missed out on. Now, there should be one laying... Actually, both really laying right around this area. That is the one that we shot with the 22H. The other I don't think is laying too far away. The amount of blood from a quarter kilo animal that I for some reason can't see. Am I blind? I don't know where it is, but apparently that is our other quail silver yet again. Nothing too big, but at least we're getting some females and getting the respawns. And I guess I'll continue to say this because it's not exactly the most obvious thing. The female bobwhite quail are the ones that make diamonds. So if you've been uh, looking for that and looking for the males, unfortunately, it seems they can't make it. We've seen max weight one now, which are 0.25 kg, not reach the diamond threshold. So females seem to be the way to go. 
And if we can, I want to spot that and make sure it's not going to be a big one. It effectively would have been the same thing if we shot it as it was landing or once it was on the ground. So just went ahead and took that out. Again, for the idea of trying to get as many from the flock as we can. So minus the crazy amount of hunting pressure here. I think we did pretty good. Got two more here, at least a gold at 0.22 kg. And I think it for the males is just their weight. And that's why they can't really reach the 260 mark. They max at 0.25 kg. So you're really not going to see much above 250, if I'm correct, about the way that works. The females is the weight and something else. Maybe the spurs, maybe feather length, they don't really tell you. And it is ultimately just kind of random. But that's, uh, I guess, the thing to look for when it comes to the quail. You're looking for the heavier female ones. And the males are just, you know, potential golds and, I don't know, probably potential cool rares. I'd like to see what they have for rares, assuming there are any. Oh, we might finally have our chance for the 12 gauge gamekeeper, and I wouldn't have guessed that it would be on a raccoon, but the bird shot is ethical for them, as we saw earlier, and it kind of goes back to that whole thing of hunting in the fields and these fringe areas on the map, where you sort of have to spook the animals to get eyes on them. It's almost like trying to push them in a self-drive in a way and then get a shot off and we could use the 22 hornet but we have shot a diamond raccoon with that already that is our one right there the question is of course it's gonna get stuck there right when we had an opening can we make a good ethical shot with a bird shot it looks like we got him good on the first one i don't know if that second shot impacted but it's not worth taking a third shot when he's going down that is a blonde level five raccoon so not exactly one of the pie balls that I mentioned earlier, but he is a diamond. He actually is our biggest diamond at 12.1. I really like that blonde fur type, and it sounds like we've got some quail flying over, so I guess we'll tax this guy quickly and try to maybe make these shots. I would have liked to have taken some more screenshots there, but if the quail were going to give us an opportunity, at least I would have liked to have gone for it. Well, either way... That may kind of change up our multi-mount, I mentioned like in the one that we had, but I think the blonde fur type's cooler and again it is higher scoring. Well I hear them at least, there's at least a one there, which the odds that we can get that I guess weren't good. Sometimes I just can't figure it out, especially on Rancho with the pheasants. We'd have shots that seem to be through like one leaf and it would not reach the bird and bring it down, where in that case we shot through the entire canopy. And I saw the little kind of, it almost looks like a puff of smoke, but what I guess is sort of the impact and feathers and stuff like that, maybe dust, uh, that they're trying to display. We got that one. I hear them all around, but it's so, so difficult, especially when you just simply miss. But eh, that's going to be a grounded one. And a male, so I don't too much mind uh, going for that. That was a 177 silver. And luckily this one went down as well. But, uh... Yeah, with a couple of kind of decent quail, I guess we'll head back to the trophy lodge and take a look at our raccoon. I didn't really think that was going to happen. We had tracked one earlier on and ended up giving up on it. That worked out a whole lot better. In an effort to switch it up a little bit, I went ahead and went back to this pose for the multi-mount. We had it in this originally before we got our diamond gator, and I just like it. The contrast of colors here is really nice, but... I thought it was uh, appropriate as well to put our old diamond raccoon just over here kind of yawning in the corner, perfectly safe and away from this diamond gator over here, but I think that's really cool and after about an hour and a half or so in the fields, it finally paid off with a diamond and it is one that I wanted. I like the blonde fur type a lot and I mean this is you know more so what I think of when I consider a kind of common raccoon, so in a way this is almost like an uncommon. and. I still want to see those piebalds, I'd love to get those in the trophy lodge, and I actually wasn't certain that the raccoons could go on these platforms, I sort of assumed, but now that I've kind of confirmed that and know that they can, I'd like to get a number of them around the lodge. We have a bunch of ducks and geese on these little platforms that probably could be replaced, and I think that'll be something to work towards as we're hunting along for those quail and other things that are more in the fields on Mississippi. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.